Welcome back to another season of checking out the top machinery from the Monster Energy Supercross series. This, of course, is on Vital MX. I'm your host, Michael Lindsay, and thanks again for tuning in. For the first 2023 bike we check out of the year, it will be Austin Forkner's number 55 Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Of course, Austin was sadly injured at a1 we will not see him back on track during the supercross season and cross our fingers we will see him at some point during the pro motocross championship so get well soon austin his bike is built and maintained by tony archer an ex-pro in his own right that switched over to spin and t handles and wrenches and all that good stuff about eight years ago now the bike itself may not visually look that different from last year outside of a new graphic scheme thanks to Throttle Syndicate that's a little bit more in line with the Factory Kawasaki squad. The first standout part that we noticed, at least from a performance standpoint, was the electric water pump. While a vast majority of your high level 250 teams added them for last year's season opener at Anaheim, once everybody kind of figured out that the HRC guys were actually running at the last few rounds of 21, the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Squad was actually not one of those teams. They were playing around with it all year and from what we initially heard from them on at least the Kawasaki platform, it didn't make as big of a difference. And as we've learned a little bit more this year on the Honda CRF250R and the Suzuki RMZ250, it seems to make the biggest difference due to the amount of mechanical drag found in their water systems, their cooling systems, impellers, etc. Um, however, on the Yamaha 250, it makes a minor difference. And coming into the KX250, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of a horse, a lot of horsepower gain here. But the team has commented about the freer feeling it produces in the engine, so they finally adapted it for race duty this year. However, this part is actually not that expensive. It is a Bosch water pump that pretty much every team uses the same model. I believe it's found in like a Toyota Prius or something like that. The part is only like 80 or 90 bucks on Amazon. The hard part is adapting it into the bike, changing the actual flow through the system, all the radiator hose routing and everything, and figuring out how to adapt it safely into the bike where it can't be damaged. And then the true difficulty lies in getting it spliced into the existing wiring without making it mess up anything, basically having its own fuse and stuff so it can't damage anything else in the system or can't draw too much and, and again, cause other electrical issues throughout the bike. And then also you have to go into the engine. You have to remove all the stock water uh, impeller and shaft parts and then plug them properly and seal that up. So again, the part itself is not that expensive. It's just the know-how and getting it operational. The rest of the engine, of course, is linked up with most of Pro Circuit's usual suspects of suppliers and partners. Pretty much everything in this engine is turned over from their own crank spec, their own rod. They work, of course, with JE pistons for the piston in this bike and have for quite a long time. You have your standard off the cell shelf JE pistons available for a KX250. There's a Pro Circuit one that you can buy as a customer. And then this race team spec one is a little bit different even than that. Not that the off the shelf part isn't good, the Pro Circuit sells, but that is adapted more for a stock KX250 or a lightly modded one, where this piston is built specifically around the head porting and head work they do their uh, cam grind, their valves, everything to get the last little inkling of power out of it. And again, it's based on so many other parts are changing. All the valve train is supplied through Dell West to their specifications. And then for a long time, their cam supplier has been Mega Cycle, from what we're aware, which I believe they are based out of the Bay Area in California. And as far as we are aware, they still are. You also see other components in the motor, such as Hinson clutch parts. It may not be as obvious as other teams because Pro Circuit runs their own branded clutch cover, but they are openly I mean, and they pretty much have worked with Hinson for a long time. So inner hub, pressure plate, basket, some of the plate combinations and springs, a lot of that stuff they work with Hinson directly on. Other performance components we see through the bike, or at least as we kind of expand beyond the engine, is of course I'm working with VP Racing Fuels. VP is one of many brands you'll see on this bike that are just synonymous with the Pro Circuit Squad. Mitch is very loyal to the brands he works with, such as Excel, Renthal, and other things we will get into. A little bit outside of the bike, of course, is the Pro Circuit exhaust system. Again, there is a race spec of this exhaust that is not quite like the customer one, and there's many reasons for that the complete engine package. They've built a pipe that works a little bit better with that than a stock engine. They also have to meet stringent sound requirements in Supercross. 
And if they wanna adjust the core length or something of that nature to work with their engine package that would maybe make it degrade a little bit quicker on the packing, not a big deal for them because they're able to change the can at free will. They may even do it uh, twice in a day. They definitely spec multiple systems in the morning through sound in case they have crash damage or if they wanna change it before heat race or main event. But either way, it's part of being on race team life, man. They can change that thing out and do what they need to do to get the best performance out of the bike at all times. The 2023 KX250, which this race bike is based on, of course, had a few changes, most notably in the engine with different intake valve sizes, different intake valve angles, um, some other top end parts. And then a big one has been the transmission change and the air boot and in second injector position. However, the Pro Circuit bike is not running either of these parts, and we'll explain why. First off, with the air boot and the second injector placement, on the 22 model, the injector was placed in the top of the air boot. On 23, they went to the bottom and changed the angle by quite a bit. On the production bike, this is a really big advancement. There's definitely a lot of power that was found there. Uh, for the Pro Circuit guys, they've been developing their own air boot for a couple years now, and they're, I think, six generations into this thing, and you know, they definitely got a good amount of expense there. They said while the new production one is good, their race one is just as good, if not better, in a couple of key areas, so they've left it for now. However, it definitely sounds like they're still fiddling around with that for the future, but for now, they're running the older style second injector position on their custom air intake boot and velocity stack. As for the transmission, which got updates for 23 to change the ratios, most notably for second and third, these were based off things that Pro Circuit was already doing with their partner x -Track. Extract is an English-based company or England-based company that is well known for doing components for the World Rally Championship, Formula One. They develop and build with Pro Circuit a complete transmission for this bike. Pro Circuit's been working for Extract, we believe, for maybe around 20 years or so. And again, this is a complete transmission that is built for their specific usage. Some other unique things we see on the bike is of course their cooling system. They've been really infamous for running an oil cooler for a long time. However, a couple years ago, they adapted the oil cooler internally into the radiator and it feeds into the cases. We also see things such as a manual cam chain tensioner, which they have to adjust again themselves. It's a little bit more precise, but it takes a little bit of babysitting as the cam chain tends to stretch a teeny bit over time, similar to your and I normal drivetrain. Another standout component that is synonymous with Pro Circuit is their suspension setup. Uh, the stock Kawasaki KX250 has jumped back and forth between KYB and Showa over the years, but Pro Circuit has used Showa kit level suspension components for again coming up on nearly 20 years at this point. That partnership includes them being able to order the components however they want. Instead of buying complete units from Showa Japan, they order them at different lengths, uh, different specs they want. They have their clevises and their fork axle brackets made here. They actually make a wider axle bracket with their own custom wide titanium axle uh, to kind of fit with the front end feel and look and, and you know feel needs they have, along with changing the offset of the axle to the lower fork tube. Uh, we also notice that with Pro Circuit's own triple clamps and who knows what rake they're actually running. These are a little bit closely guarded Pro Circuit secrets, but these are things that they work on their test rider Ivan Tedesco with. And as far as we're aware, everybody on the team gets set kind of on the same setup once they kind of find something that works for everybody. Once they get the trail and offset and rake that they are looking for by combining all the changes with those parts. Talking again about the rest of the suspension though, Pro Circuit orders it kind of in pieces, assembles it here in California, has things coded how they want to, has different parts made, and they sell this suspension to the public. You can get the entire complete linkage that they build for this bike, the three-piece shock body, the kit forks, the lugs, the axle, everything, and it'll set you back over $10,000. Of course, all the race and practice bikes are equipped with this. They are tuned by in-house Pro Circuit technicians along with technical support and assistance from a show technician assigned to the team. A couple of interesting things that Tony Archer told us about the setup with Austin Forkner was what he is picky about. Doesn't sound like much, but one of the things he really notices is front brake feel. Like many pros, he wants a very stout and precise front brake. And while yeah, he'll ride if it's not quite perfect, as Tony said, Austin's not a prima donna. He says definitely one of the things he jumps on a bike and notices first is how good that front brake and how sharp and responsive it feels. Speaking of front brake, one thing we found interesting with that is that on his levers that he runs Arc Memelon instead of Arc Aluminum. While a lot of teams use Arc levers for their quality and they have the folding levers on the purchase, um, 
a lot of those guys run aluminum levers because of how precise they feel. Uh, Arc has a lever called Memlon, which is a composite material that has a little bit of flex and give to it in crash situations to give a little bit more durability even over the standard folding aluminum set. A lot of pros typically won't pick them because the lever does tend to flex a little bit under heavy loads, again, to a really minor degree, but for some guys it is noticeable. Austin isn't quite that picky. He does like the Memlon lever and having the little bit of extra durability there and chooses to still run those. Things that Tony says he's not sensitive about or is not picky about is his bar and lever position and even his rear brake pedal position. Tony said he can set them at his will, whatever he feels like maybe Austin needs to work on with his riding stance a little bit. And he said that he adapts pretty quickly and doesn't usually question it. Two of the unique items that we see on this motorcycle that are supplied by KHI, Kawasaki Heavy Industry, their works parts, are the works front and rear hubs for their wheel sets, which are tied together with Excel A60 rims. Those are a bit stiffer, um, but also stronger than the standard Excel rims. Some teams choose to use them for durability, while some teams lend to stay away from them again because of the stiffer and more feedback feel to the riders. But the Pro Circuit team has run these rims for a long time and they stick with them with all their guys. Again, and getting back to the KHI part, we have the hubs, but then we also have the front brake caliper. While it isn't the shiny billet cut Nissan unit that we see on the factory Yamahas and Starbikes, it's still supplied by Nissan, but it is an old KHI Kawasaki spec part. For a long time, this brake caliper was made of magnesium from what we are aware. It now looks like many of them are made of aluminum, but still to the same general shape and design. I think they've been using this caliper for 20 years, maybe more. Uh, it has two pistons that are larger than stock. And a really interesting one is in Supercross, they have a different version of this caliper that is thinner because again, it accepts thinner brake pads. It has shorter pistons, shorter throw in it. All this is to reduce weight in Supercross where the braking zones just aren't as heavy as they are outdoors. However, go to outdoors, they go to a more standard sized overall caliper. As with most of the parts on this bike, water pump, pipes, bling, uh, anything really performance or even looks, it's a pro circuit component. You can buy the vast majority of parts on this bike. Some of the unique items that we don't know as much about is maybe the titanium hardware. While some teams partner specifically with one manufacturer supplier, from what we've heard, the pro circuit team will go out and get whatever is best for each situation, whether that's working with MedTech, Racetech Titanium, and other titanium nuts, bolts, and hardware suppliers, or if they even have machinists make custom parts for different areas of the bike. They're just looking for whatever fastener is best for that location. We also see a lot of long-term sponsors on the bike again, such as lightweight chains from RK. We have twin wall uh, bars from Renthal and their sprockets, uh, Renthal grips. And the unique one with Austin is the fact that he runs a half waffle grip on his throttle tube side, but on his left side clutch control side, he runs a full waffle grip, which has certain areas of the full waffle cut out. Uh, again, a little unique preference that he has for his ability to grip and feel the bar, which Tony modifies for him with every set. Another unique one that some people may not know about is the fact that they run Guts lightweight racing seat foams under their throttle syndicate gripper covers. These foams from Guts are very lightweight and compared to titanium, or at least the cost that it would take to shave a pound or a pound and a half off your bike in titanium, these seat foams are pretty efficient and inexpensive option. As for the rest of the bike setup, from what we understand, the Pro Circuit team basically develops the stoutest 250 they can across the board. That's what everybody on the team runs. And speaking of those engines, every mechanic on the team for their rider actually assembles and, take care, and takes care of their own race and practice engines. Unlike most factory level teams now that have a dedicated engine guy, Pro Circuit still puts that trust in each mechanic individually to disassemble, inspect, and service those motors. There are a few key components through the engine that are taken to a crew chief or higher level member of the team to inspect, but for the most part, it really lies on the mechanic's own laps to take care of that. As for the electronics with most teams, or at least teams of this caliber, the wiring harness is either 100% custom or heavily modified from stock, linking into a 2D system for the data tracking on the bike, and then using a factory version of a key in ECU and the software that is only available to some of these high level teams to be able to tweak all the parameters of the ECUs. That's why we see teams beyond kind of this reach of a, of a true factory level uh, typically work with an aftermarket ECU company because they can't get the type of software that say a team like Pro Circuit does to be able to dive into all the parameters. Of course, this is Austin Forkner's seventh year with the Monster Energy Pro Circuit squad. He's had a little bit different number every year, but Austin has been here for quite a while. 
Uh, we hope to get to see them sometime this summer. If you enjoyed this feature, please give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Also check out the playlist. We're gonna put all these in for each bike we do this year. We try to put out one every week before the next race uh, for you guys to drool over. There's a lot of cool things on this bike that we don't even get to cover in this video because we just don't have enough time. If you have questions, throw them in the comments section below. And then lastly, if you wanna learn more about all the changes we see every weekend on these race bikes, check out vitalmx.com for pit bits. We run it before every Supercross and at the Outdoor Nationals, we run it the day after. You can find out whatever's changing on these bikes and all the cool parts that we talk about in these videos. You can see the nice high res photos up close and just get to see what your favorite rider is running or trying that week.